Hi, everyone. Leave the sniper. Oh, sniper. God. Sniper. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and I'm down. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Behold This Crit. Uh, we're going to continue off our discussion with the campaign recap thus far. Um, this was meant to be one video, but we all talked a lot, so we're going to make it two. Uh, anyways, we're going to start talking on the campaign, and we're going to start off with episode one and just kind of go through it. We're not going to kind of have any format. We want to keep this in um, kind of a five episode chunk but since we are just starting now about 27 episodes deep we're gonna kind of just kind of clump all those first couple episodes into this one episode and then go forward with the next five chunks um so i guess we'll just start off with the beginning of the campaign where uh essentially our uh adventurers made a cult <laughs> whoopsie yeah it didn't don't, mean to it don't just whoopsie rolled in me. our favor <laughs> So, just to clarify, um, I don't remember how we all met. We were just had gathered or gotten on the cart with the wardens and mm -hmm. were constricted, constricted uh, to do some sort of work, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And travel yeah. with them. Uh, I woke escorting. up and you were just like, hey, you're finally out. awake. And it was weird. Like... <laughs> Horse thief. <laughs> Essentially, you guys, for your own individual reasons, uh, found work uh, guarding a caravan going to the village of Aldero. Um, yeah. The reasoning behind that, I don't think, has been discussed as of yet for everyone, but um, that's where you guys started the campaign, and then you were on the road to Aldero, and then <coughs> quickly got to the city, so. Yeah. Bless so, you. I think first real point would be, I, I didn't trust anybody at first. I didn't even trust the wardens. So as soon as we got together... And we were traveling, and we were going down to Aldero. Um, if shit got weird, Ravul was ready to leave that cart. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but Brondoon is complete opposite. Where same, it's just like, I trust everyone that is on here. You are my family. We are now <laughs> combined, and I will live and die for you. You sound like <laughs> you the dog from brother, Up, and that's just... it. <laughs> I love you. I love Hello. You. I have just met you, and I love you. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's how we. That's at least how Posey was for that teenage child that was also on the caravan with us. That I don't remember his name. I'll look it up. Wrong. But... Quinn. No. Quinn. So, him like Fenty? immediately latched onto this. It was him and Rev because they were described as teenagers. I'm like, oh no, this mother needs to protect these two <laughs> poor, sweet, innocent souls. Little did she know that Rev is just a demon machine for the fire and lightning but been doing his thing for a little while yep and then quinn was the other warden that was escorting you with um quinn was the, the, the lanky little warden the boy who couldn't do anything yeah. you say he yeah. couldn't do anything he... <laughs> we taught him an important lesson don't, don't die, die. Don't <laughs> exactly die. i think uh, very quickly after that we uh we had found the bandits right yeah, well, so we were attacked in Aldero, I think was the big one. And yes, we you're went right. And found the bandits. And it was, we found the cave first where we kind of met some people and we tracked them out a little bit. And then the cult happened. Like an accident. <laughs> you yep. know, and, and I think that to me is, well, uh, me being the kind of person I am, I, I, and being so early in the campaign, I don't know if Brondune would play that the same way given that it's much later in the campaign, kind of not knowing the character, per se. Mm -hmm. um, given his low intelligence, I don't know if he would fully understand what he did. Um, but the wisdom of his high wisdom, especially being a monk, kind of led him to think that maybe we could trick them or do something along those lines. But the fact that everybody jumped in and helped him right away of, I'm going to give him a cantrip of, you know, thaumaturgy and light, and we're going to use Mars' hand, and we're going to use this, and we'll do that, we'll do earthquakes, like, just absolutely just uh, fully con concealed the group of, like, I am tied to everyone here now. <laughs> everyone here is my friend, I live and die for you, you're my brother, you're my new family. It's so at done. any point in time during that, uh, has Brondune had the thought in his mind that may maybe I am a god? Is that is that something that has happened at some point, or uh, for after we've I don't, created a cult to now, has that come yet? I don't think so. I don't think it's I'm a god, but he definitely feels like he's progressed far enough that he's far beyond anything that he ever would have imagined. 
certainly okay. um and certainly uh, uh far beyond anything that he thought anyone on from his hometown of pukoma would have would have come up from um to say that he's a god i don't think he would think that way mostly because you know he doesn't fully follow the god path if you would yeah. mm-hmm. so i don't think it's really something he would come up with yeah, I remember came in was going into that cave with like, all right, so we got a kid, we got a guy that fights with his bare hand, that seems insane, and we've got a lady with a unicorn mace. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, this is going to be a bloodbath. Okay, we're going to wait. It works. Wait, they're buying it. They're still buying it. <laughs> they're... Okay, we, there, there oh, are God. now. We we have followers. Am I going to get in trouble? I have a level of cleric. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I, and I talked about this a little bit in our last video, that was a culmination of a lot of good roles as well as a lot of assistance from everyone else on your party. Um, mm-hmm. There was lights, there was fire explosions, there was uh, thaumaturgy, booming voices, boom, marzipan. Um, from you guys rolling and helping each other just crazy, and then me with the insight from all of my stupid bandits just being terrible roles, you know, the cult of Teravangian was born. Mm-hmm. Well, um, not to mention it wasn't necessarily a bad thing either, because we brought them all back to the town and made them good people, you know? So, and K-Man's point of being a lawful good cleric, I mean... Um, let's not be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> as, far, as far as that goes, I think you're good. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, and early yeah, in the campaign, like, Brandoon is yeah. a pacifist and doesn't want to fight anybody, so it's kind of his way of getting around fighting people. So, yeah, you know. And then yeah, no, I, I went there expecting to kill that entire cave, and it's like, oh, mm-hmm. I guess they're recruited to do gooding. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> and All then right. after that entire thing, where you come, out, you know, have the Mulan you know Uh session or you know time lapse and whatnot then all of a sudden you guys come up to this house that's just blood and guts and gore everywhere um which i it was that was the first time in the campaign granted it wasn't very far into it where you know okay this is real something real is happening it's not just bandits you know uh this isn't something bandits could do so uh that was kind of like a turning point for you all i think where you kind of found that and then you found maria and that was, you know, Posey's, you think mom is things happen with, you know, the teenage, with Quinn and Ravul, Maria pops in and she's like, oh my God, we got to protect this <laughs> child, you know? <laughs> I think after we had, you know, gotten our cultists or slaves, whatever you want to call them. Right? <laughs> wow. And, and we um, made it out to... Enthusiastic volunteers. Perfect. But there you go. Unpaid interns. Yes. Um, Actually, they're paid, out, technically. Or... Only so. We actually did pay them. I yeah. paid them pretty well with a gold a day. So. Yeah, we're not a ho- heartless corporation. <laughs> um, Our minimum wage is high enough. To... Oh my god. We paid fucking great. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, a gold oh, like yeah, a day. No, like, above minimum there wage. have been so many gold transactions where Cayman just kind of like, no, it's the- okay, they've done it. They they gave you. <laughs> I gave love silver, watching Cayman and Brondune bartering, and then Cayman's like, uh ah, ah, oh. Like, <laughs> I like I want like Brandon will go and like I want this like all right it'll be like five okay here we could have get a, okay that's done <laughs> which is funny because Brandon kind of flip flops in his shopping he does like, it's so I'm funny. actually gonna fight for everything every cent every copper until nah fuck it just take it all <laughs> yeah oh he is the God. greatest bar patron in the world because he will tip super high and he is the worst customer to have in a retail setting yup <laughs> yup. Yo, what about a discount though? I already gave you discount, but another. <laughs> <laughs> what about For second more, right? discounts? <laughs> and Do you have then... a membership card? <laughs> oh, what about man. a payment plan? What's your rewards program like? <laughs> <laughs> like we said, that could be a whole video by itself. Just yeah. talking about that. That I mean, it was. Program, it was. by the way, is also consistent for branded playing. It's like, it's basically just the DM <laughs> having to go, okay, I will give you a discount if you keep buying things. So let's get you a rewards card uh, just to stop you from arguing with me. It's just like, me. please move along from what you need. And that just comes from my many years of retail experience in real life. So, I hate it. Yeah, it, <laughs> and it triggers most anybody else that's been in retail. So yeah, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's a, it's pretty spot on. Ron Carey. Right? From someone that... Yes, correct. We've all... I think all of us have been in retail and mm. dealt with dealt with people like that. Ron, and, dude. 
<laughs> yeah, people like Ron Dunn. The world. I mean, I got some real life stories I can tell. It would take some yeah. time. Uh, Braun right. Dune is the Karen of the world. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's I mean, the Karen I, I, we um, need. <laughs> Uh, so, but yeah, so going back to the thing, we did the house. It was crazy. First mystery we had. And we all kind of freaked out over the magic that was there. And we even picked up the chain that seems to lead to nothing. Um, but So I have a question around that. How did everybody yeah. feel about Maria? Like, what was what was their vibes? Yo, uh, you didn't I, trust I know, Maria for I anything. Know, I didn't trust Maria. Yeah. She was found in a bloody house. You know what I mean? And super sketchy. Was a, she admitted to not telling us the truth later on. Like, well, I feel that's a Rav motivation, though. He doesn't really trust people. Which is, which is to, you know. to be fair, very yeah. true. And I think at that point, like we had mentioned earlier when we first met, I think after we had left Maria's house and kind of dealt with that and we were on the way to Mooncliff is when Ravul was comfortable with everybody at that point. You know what I mean? Um, but not Maria, <laughs> you know? Sure. Personally, I thought Maria was a demon or something. Uh, I, I genuinely, I genuinely genuinely was ready for like a pit fiend to pop out of maria um you know being <laughs> a tiefling he's he's not you know um not it's not like he doesn't know about demons and you True. know succubus and crazy weird things like that so he was very wary of her um and not to mention when we came up to the door i think i was the first in i explicitly made an opportunity to go in first in front of everybody um, because of that reason, when we walked in, the door was open, it was filled with gore. I was yep. like, you know what, at this point, I can go in there, be a distraction, and get out myself. And if that gives time for everybody else to get out, then we're good. And at that point, Revol would have probably dipped and never seen you guys again, you know? Aww. He would, because at that point, he wouldn't have trusted you guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> so. I think Cayman might have walked in first and, like, just seen all the gore and just kind of, like, walked around, closed the door. It's like, look... Maybe we just go. <laughs> this this is a bit much. We were guarding a cart. <laughs> but that's what I mean. Like, how did how did you guys feel about trusting Maria after that? Because we walked into a literal murder scene of corpses so for, and blood. Yeah, it was hard to believe a child got away from that. Yeah. Well, so me as a player, I was completely on board with the fact that yes, she is a demon hiding inside this tiny child's body. Yeah. And this was the very first moment of player versus character because Posey, Posey trusted her implicitly. This is a small mm -hmm. child who has been through something horrible. I need to help her. Anything that she tells me is 100% true. But as a player, I'm like, nope, she's going to stab you in the back. She's going to eat your soul. She's going <laughs> to grow 40 fangs. I don't know what's going to happen. Yup. Well, yeah. I believe on the way, when we were leaving that place too, we were attacked. Yeah. Um, yes. yes. The yeah, curse yeah, of Loxanthropy we strikes again. Yeah, and that's really where Brondin kind of had maybe a thought that there might be more to Maria, you know? So when you first meet her, it's like, oh yeah, I think she's just a kid, it's fine. And then she gets attacked and it's like, well, maybe there is something else there. Maybe like, these aren't normal things that we see every day. It's not wolves, it's not, you know, bandits. It's like yeah. flying creatures. It's, you know, werewolf for the, for the better, for the lack of a better explanation that you're seeing. And it really kind of leads you to think that like, there's gotta be something more here. Either she is one of them, has some sort of secret or has something there that they're after her to get it, get it back. And yeah. that really was the time where Brondoon is like, I think there's something there. It's also the time where Brondoon gets to become a loxanthrope. So, yes. yeah, you know, which was, was a good time. You too. know what? It, on Another that topic, let's point. move on from the Maria and go to the loxanthrope piece because... There is one more thing I wanted to touch on, though. Okay, go. That was also the first time we came across the double fang sim sigil. Yep. Yes. Oh, yeah. That was the start that was of it. That was tattooed on one of the bat creatures. Yeah, true. Or That's a very good Andrew. point. Good, ta good mm -hmm. thing to bring up, actually, because that was kind of reoccurring for a good while until... Just until it was recently. tattooed, it was like yes. maybe just beasts attacking people in the wood. Wow, it has a tattoo. That's very specific. Well, it was more. Of, mm -hmm. It was more of like a branding than a tattoo, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, as well. Um, yeah, more of like a physical mark. So either way, it, it, was, it was fucked. It was. Fucked. It was something that, and I think we saw that mark also back at the like bloodbath at the farmhouse. Yeah, so it's like I believe it was well, on the floor in the basement. Um, yeah, it's like mm -hmm. well, these are definitely associated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm, when are we gonna have and to then, kill this kid? And then got like a thropy. Well, well, <laughs> well, well. There's a piece. There's Locks a story to that, right? Because he got bit. He went to Locks and Thropes Anonymous to try and figure it all out. And then, 
Uh, you guys went on a quest to, I think, Edgefield uh, mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. Irva, um, which was one of the bandits you guys converted. Mm-hmm. It didn't buy into your shit, but you converted her to a friend. <laughs> hey. yeah. um, she was getting paid. She didn't care. Exactly. Yep. And then you, Brondune actually technically died on the way to Edgefield. Yeah. Well, it was also the first time Brondune like, really kind of more or less stepped out of character to be more aggressive Mm -hmm. because it was a a, he didn't know that it was some sort of like bandit captain or whatever but they were on the road there and they said give us all your stuff and he's like no like what do you mean fight me like I don't care and that fight went horribly wrong mostly because I don't know monk stuff yet Um, still don't but that's a different that's a different discussion um but basically, you know, he was standing toe to toe and he just wanted to take this guy on head to head and ended up going down. First time we actually saw a player go down, quote unquote, for full knockout and more or less death, if you would, and came back as a locks or a lichen through, put it in, in better terms, and then became Bron Doom for the first time, which was you know Bron Doom. Uh, I'm, I'm curious as to <laughs> know what what everybody else thought when they first saw Bron Doom and what that really meant for the party to to see this kind of creature come out of him. I'm still worried about Bron Doom. <laughs> um, did, you only got a little impaled. You got up. You're fine. Bron Doom, as far as Ravul can see, is his biggest threat amongst the party. <laughs> You know what I mean? And when sure. when that happened, that trust thing was still going on. And you mm-hmm. you had impaled me, and I was like, am I going to have to kill my fellow party member here? Like, I was really torn there, <laughs> you know? And I think I did put you unconscious. I think I bursted you on you. I'm pretty sure I elemental braked and well, knocked us I, both back out. Yeah, but because that's also way before, I think we didn't know, still don't really fully know what the elemental break is. Yeah right so we had no idea what that was at the time um you know and what that really means for how you attack or do anything and it didn't really matter he was didn't really have full functionality yeah. anyway but yeah i think it was you that ended up putting him down just because like, we got to end this i don't want to have to too yeah or and myself yeah that was a very interesting time i like i said i still like i trust brown dune i don't trust brown dune doom you know what doom. i mean like if if <laughs> When Brondoon gets into that mindset, and if he were to ever get into that mindset again, I think it is pretty much 3v1 at that point, mm-hmm. or 3v whatever we're fighting, you know? Yep. So. Yeah, it wasn't... I think at the at that time, I don't think either Posey or even myself realized how much of an issue that could be. Like, in her mind, it was like, okay, we just had to figure out a way to break him out of it. Yeah. Um, but... I would be curious, I'm curious to ask you, because I know that we talked about this a ton, especially once you started, you went to that first meeting of the Lycanthropes Anonymous, Mm -hmm. um, of whether or not you wanted to stick with, if you wanted to play out Lycanthropy and it's like, if you wanted to actually have that be part of your character, or if you definitely wanted to just get rid of it. Yeah, so at the time it was Brondoon wanted to be different and kind of stand out. And if this was something he could, you know, control or do that would be different, he was all about it. He was like, maybe we can work it out. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe we can, you know, make this work. And then when it does happen and he realizes he can't control it or it really kind of puts him in the state of like, this is the whole reason I left home. And the whole reason I left was because I can't control my anger. I'm hurting those around me. I'm basically back into that exact same position there's a chance that I could control it, but not nearly as much as I thought I could. It became a whole turning point of like, I hurt Rav, I think I hurt Posey, oh, yeah. I think Cayman was the only one that really didn't get hurt, but still was a very <laughs> strong possibility to do so. Still I'm Team Brondu. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it really kind of made his whole brain turn around, like, because in those first meetings, I was like, hey, you can control it, it'll be fine, you've got, you know, a month to figure it out, and you've got all these time and he's like all right cool maybe it'll work maybe i can turn it in battle like actually help my attacks or something but that first time it happened it completely made up his mind of this is not good yeah it was super interesting that it happened to be you as well that got infected with it um being brondune having those kind of like you said the backstory of the like anger issues and why you left mm-hmm. home and stuff like that 
you know, for a little while while you were doing that and while you were kind of playing with the idea of, you know, riding out lycanthropy, I, I was sitting there thinking, how is this going to play out with his whole anger management issue? Because as soon as, you know, you turned and you started attacking Rav, I think you had that aha moment where you're like, yeah, this ain't for Braun, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention that point when you essentially died, um, from the player's perspective, not the character's perspective, that was when you guys realized, shit, Lee is going to do, Lee is this kind of DM. <laughs> Um, yes, correct. <laughs> and if you actually go back and watch the VOD, seeing your guys' faces, just like when you realize, shit, that's an auto crit. She's down two death throws. He could mm-hmm. die here. And then seeing your faces revert right from that moment, like five minutes later when I describe him getting up as a loxen throat, like the range of emotions in that session was <laughs> immense. Like if you watch that five minute segment, Actually, that session I actually rewatched it, and I was like, "That was a roller coaster and a half for you guys." Um, yeah, yep. but it was crazy to see you guys real, and that was also one of the first times you all realized that, th- you know, this is dangerous. Like, I yeah. left home, you know, I'm trying to figure out my place in the world. Posey's trying to protect everyone, but shit, someone almost died right in front of me. This is real, yep. you know, and that was from the yeah. character's perspective. Yep, I think Ramul had kind of already had that perspective in his mind from day one and still does. It, you know, he's very prepared for anybody in this group, including himself, to fall down and die at any point, you know, and it, it happened when he opened the door to go in the, the Reed's farmhouse. It happened when he blew up the bandit. It happened when he blew up Brondoon, you know what I mean? Like Brondoon. <laughs> Brondoon. It, it's Doom interesting you know <laughs> to see how everybody how their characters yeah, react to that i feel and... like your death was like that one moment for all of us in completely separate terms mm-hmm. like yeah. for posy it was like this is the one literal thing that she is supposed to do is protect mm-hmm. people and she even just as a technical aspect did not have revivify yet and there was nothing that she could do but just mm-hmm. watch you die right in front of her and i think also I think I was the only one that actually saw it happen, like in terms mm-hmm. of people like looking at, because, you know, Rap was fighting some other guys and came in was like behind the cart fighting some other people. And so I literally just watched you die and there was nothing that I could do yeah. about it. I was and, like, oh, God. And even for Brondoon, it was this moment of like, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory, like a big epic battle. Like he's okay with dying. Like that's not a big thing. It's more about it's just a bandit on the side of the street why am i dying to him you know like mm-hmm. and that's really where that came in too so but yeah all of that yeah. yeah i remember when he went down i was like well this sucks because as a player i know the rules of this game mm-hmm. as a character i don't so let's run over and use my biggest spell slot for a heal yep. <laughs> i know it won't work but here we go <laughs> so that's my action now i'll stand next to the man that just killed the monk and we're good, right? No, okay. <laughs> that plight of the player versus character. Yeah. yeah. I think everything that happened after that, though, was really was great, though, for the party. You know, mm-hmm. and really, I think there was a great conversation that happened afterwards, especially with you, Rondun, where you were like, I don't like getting like that. I don't want to be angry. That's, I think, that's the most of your backstory re- we really know is you were like, mm-hmm. listen, the reason I'm here is because I don't want to be like that. And I think that really helped the party it definitely helped Ravul stay with everybody and I think again Aww. that was really when everything tied for him it was mm-hmm. after all the lycanthropy and everything and all that everybody almost dying together um, as opposed yeah. to them dying and Ravul running or so on yeah absolutely or Ravul dying and everybody else running yeah and that was I think like Lee said it was on the way to Edgefield which was like our first big journey outside mm-hmm. of Mooncliff like Mooncliff was our home and we were on our way to Edgefield, where it's the next city and next kind of little point that we had, where we were learning more about what was going on and what the next steps would be. Um, yeah, because you guys were heading to Edgefield to head into Splitwood at that point, right? If I recall. Yeah, chasing mm-hmm. the, the, the ogres. Trolls. Yeah, um, the nope. ogres. The, the ogres, yep. yep. Okay. That's what Which that was. Which in and of itself was 
was quite a fight as well. That's also when you found you. the Terravangelists that yes, got demolished. Yes, that was the most exciting moment. Yes. That yep. was like, what? It's happening. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because when you got to Edgefield, you went to the tavern and you, you saw a sign for Terravangelist, join now. Do you want to make a difference in the world? And then we um, asked about the ogres, and they were like, yeah, this bunch of idiots ran out and tried to, <laughs> they were like, yeah, we'll handle it. And it was like six people with, like, sticks ran out and thought they could yeah. handle this ogre. I think they had javelins or something, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, like, tried, we, like, bought them weapons and, uh -huh. like, ran to them with, like, weapons and shit. Yeah, that They're was just fun. dead around the field. Yeah, it's like, oh, cool, the Boy Scouts have gone to fight the ogres, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah. Oh boy, there. Mm, yeah, Gaiman went there knowing it's like, yeah, there's going to be some bodies. Yeah, the first <laughs> rule was don't die. Like, what happened? We uh, need the book. We need the Terra Evangelist book. Yeah. We still need to we need to work that out and write that out for you. But um, yeah, and that was, oof, that, and that was a big turning point too of, of to what Dave asked was like, you know, at what point do we really see this escalation of the Terrafangelist and does mm -hmm. it really become a religion or what becomes of it? And I, I you know, get further ahead, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get further ahead in the campaign. But even for Brondune at that point, it was just more of a like, hey, I'm glad to see it, it stuck and people are still doing things. Like, that's pretty cool. Maybe we can still do good. And that's really his whole motive is like, let's do good. Let's, let's do something. Let's, you know, if I can bring more people into doing good around the world, maybe that's great. But at the same time, I don't want them running out and dying. So that whole sense of urgency of like, I don't want people to go die in my name. Like, that's not cool. Like, I don't want that. So well, yeah, that's, that's going to be a very there. big di directional, you know, split where you could choose one mm -hmm. way or another or a couple of different yeah. ways, you know, depending upon how you want to really how deep you want to go into the Terra Evangelist thing. Like the first group of Terra Evangelists went and got kind of demolished by ogres. Um, but, you know, how much more is that going to really affect the world, you know, come, you know, session 30, 40, 50? Um, yeah. And I, I actually am really excited to see that specific piece of it, just to see how far the Terra Evangels do get. <laughs> that's why we built the community center for right? them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's the thing. It's like we keep doing stuff to build it up. And at the same time, we're all worried that they're going to go out and continue well, to so do stuff. So that's the thing. It's like at first it was just a defense tactic. We were like, what, level three at the time? Level and we we're like, we just need to not die we may not be able to take all these people, so let's do this. And like, okay, mm -hmm. now we have like a little following. We're taking them under our wing. And then they go to fight the ogres. We're like, oh no, they're stupid. We have to protect <laughs> them now. So now we need to build a community center so that they don't die anymore because we accidentally made them just be filled with these thoughts of glory yeah. and forgot to tell them how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, not to mention, the ogres that they were fighting also happened to be the second encounter of the fang symbol and lycanthropy we had found. So not yeah. only were they fighting ogres, they were fighting wolf Special ogres. ogres. Werewolf <laughs> ogres, yeah, whatever, however you want to word that, but yeah. Workers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I like it. Um, but yeah, and that, that was the other thing is like, to your point, it's like, everything we're running into now is is werewolf or a and throw exactly. or whatever it is. And it's like, this is much bigger than we thought it was because it was just some creatures in the woods now. And this is going to start to escalate. Have we done the right thing of bringing these people into it? And are they going to be able to fight them off? So, yeah. Um, and I believe at that point we had already um, dropped Maria off or uh, mm -hmm. Wolvar had taken Maria back to yeah. um, Mooncliff is what it was. Well, so we had and, gone to Mooncliff, the wardens gave us some task and we had chose to do this task because it was yes. going to, yeah, and it was going to be like the highest bounty or whatever. And it was kind of where we were headed at the time. Well, that's so, the thing. Yeah. I think that task was go investigate. And we were like, Correct. okay, we'll go get information. If we think we can handle it, we'll get in a fight. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, yeah. oh, the Terra Evangelist went and went to go fight those. Oh, oh, we got to go now. <laughs> yeah. We have to go save people now. This is now a rescue mission. Yeah. 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 And uh, th that actually, that's a good point to bring up, too, is when you got the job from the wardens to go do that, you actually had a couple of different points there where you could choose where to go. That was your first crossroads of where you could really decide yeah. where you wanted to do, you know, what you know, a lead you wanted to touch upon. And that was actually one of the episodes that was unfortunately, you know, vanished into the ether in the God sense beans. that um, you met the Templars of Respite and they... Oh, sad times. Yeah. I didn't realize that one went into the... Into that the one ether, did go into the ether. Yeah. So. 
but well, because that was a, it was a good one because it, it Give also me a sec, guys. Back. I'll be right back. All right, take yeah, your time. You keep we'll talking. To keep talk. talking. Yeah. So it was another one of those points where Rav was didn't trust anybody, but I think you were out taking care of Maria at that point. Yeah. We all just went and signed up for the wardens and said, "Let's go." We just signed our life away. It didn't matter what the contract said. We yep. all signed. And then when you came back, you're like, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a very interesting time because I, I think it was like two sessions, three yeah. sessions. I hadn't been there. Um, so I had talked to Lee and I was like, what am I going to do? Like, what am I doing while, while I'm gone? And mm -hmm. it was like, well, the session started and it was after the first one. And it was like, everybody else had shit to do. And Maria was an NPC that needed to be dealt with. So you went and played Playground, and I made up kind of a story around that where I was like, I would have made sure she's not a demon, and I would have, mm -hmm. you know, done all these other things, even after we went to the Temple of Saloon and did all of that stuff. Um, it, it was, you know, crazy. But you guys, I, I can't, you guys come back a couple days later, and you're like, hey, we're cops. And we're like, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> we're like, you're like, yeah, we signed up for the army. Like, yeah, basically. We don't enlisted. worry, we're just doing it to steal their stuff. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. and not to mention, you guys are like, yeah, well, we signed up for the army, we got our badges and everything, but we lost the the badges, so <laughs> we didn't lose them, we sold them. We sold them, yeah. It wasn't I still even we don't lost comprehend them, yeah. what happened during that. Like, especially in character, I'm like, you guys went away for a couple days. <laughs> I hung out with this child, and you guys came back claiming to be soldiers with no proof and <laughs> so on well, honestly those those sessions were almost like a fever dream like i don't like it was it was almost just saying yes to everything Every, everything that was in front of us yeah it, it all like, happened so quickly we went to the templars of respite yeah. and they were like do this we're like okay it, yeah. it'll get the information and then we went to the wardens they're like the only way to get this is to be a warden and we went okay <laughs> yeah. we just did i mean at least for posy I would love to find out uh, Brondoon and K-Man's thoughts on it. But for Posey, being a warden was basically like, that's that's exactly what she wants to do is go out and help people. Maybe not necessarily under like a specific name or an organization, but mm -hmm. that was just like a no brainer for her to sign up. But you two just <laughs> went ahead and signed up with very well, little pushback, if I recall. You two had already signed up, so I was like, all right, cool, I guess we're doing this. So I was like, all right, cool, so this will get me contacts in the Templar of Respite. This will get me money for traveling and finding information. And I figured, it's like, oh, this will probably open a lot of doors for me if we don't get arrested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if we do get arrested, whatever, I'll turn into a mouse. They don't know. <laughs> and this was all before the whole like bandit thing right so it was Brandu just was doing whatever he felt like he needed to do at that point like it was you need to do this so you got to do this and then we're going to go do this it's like okay <laughs> makes sense to me let's do it and it was the same idea that Heyman had it's like well what are they going to do they're going to track me down great I'll go back home to Pacoma they're not going to find me there they're not going to track me there like whatever you know and, and that was really it that was the whole idea it, it just felt like you know, one of those things that we had to do to do the next thing. So we went along and did it. And then I still remember when Rav came back, I was like, you did what? Why does that make sense to any of you? Like, Brondoon, I kind of get like, all right, cool, whatever. <laughs> He's going to do whatever. But like, Posey? Yeah. I, I, K-Man? Yeah. I could not understand how you justified <laughs> joining getting an item that was incredibly important and then just throwing <laughs> it away i could not understand how you guys just we didn't that. throw it away we sold it to sold get it. context mm -hmm. about the knights of respite and then it turned out we were standing in the middle of the knights of respite <laughs> so we were we kind of couldn't just be like oh we found them yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like well uh, okay hmm so was, this is the thing we must deal with now to say the least and i don't think i don't think Ravul signed any sort of warden contract until they went after Claude. Yep. Until yep. the contract for Claude was like mm -hmm. actually put up. Um, yeah, because we actually had the, we went and got the special disclaimer added to the orc hunt so we could ensure that you got paid because you, yeah. you did not want to sign up for the wardens at that point. Yeah. So we're like, alright, well if you help us and we're wardens then give him some money kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and that was, it, that was the piece of the episode that was probably 
the most important part that was that's missing, unfortunately, is your guys' negotiations with the Wardens, as well mm-hmm. as your interactions with the Templars of Respite and kind of figuring yeah. out the, you know, the pull and, you know, of power between the Wardens versus the Templars of Respite and their kind of, you know, where they are within the city and how they interact with each other. Um, yeah. And then you found out later that they have some sort of connection because then Vashimi just was like, yeah, I, you know, I did something, you, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, well, yeah, now we know Vashimi is part of, like, the underground cabal. Oh. Well, like, yeah, I think yeah. we need to have a whole episode ep- episode just about Vashimi and his <laughs> secret dealings because I really believe there's something sneaky going on we there. I really think he's now. Be... I can charm him whatever I want. He can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be the BBEG of the whole thing. Like, it's, it's oh, going to be... Yeah. Like he's gonna be final boss, man. You put the squeaky point. floorboard yeah. he's one too into, like, many a big, times big at some point. Yeah, you're squeaky. Oh, that reminds me. I have to train some go. rats to make a squeaky floorboard noise. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my friend. I heard you <laughs> rang his bell too many times. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to pick with like you this. as well. It's just the, the Rev Four is just three slightly overly obnoxious people and their mom who just keeps apologizing <laughs> for it. That's it. That is the best tagline for the Rev Four. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, we're not all bad. See, we got Posey. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. I also think Rev has finally come around to that. Like, I do believe, like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm, I'm interested to know your thoughts on this, but to your point, Rev was always the one I don't trust, I don't trust, I don't do this. And we finally see him, like, break through, especially now, much later in, in the series, where he's finally breaking through and having some fun and relaxing a little bit with the group and, and partaking in some of these antics, <laughs> as, as we would call it. So what are your thoughts on that? What is, was there a point where Rav had this idea of like, hey, everything's not bad. Let me let me relax a little bit. It probably it, it was it took a while. Um, I mean, it he was ready to be he was comfortable with everybody and um, trusted everybody to as, as much as you can with an adventuring group um, sure. or say just, you know, like I said, an adventuring group or a troop of people um, until we were on our way to get clawed at uh, the Raven Outpost or something like that. Mm-hmm. Eagle View um, Eagle, Eagle View Keep. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was still very on edge. It's not that he didn't trust everybody. It's that he just didn't know where any of this was going and how he could use this towards his greater ends. Um, you know, it kind of seemed like they were running about um, and what he was going for and what he needed to do and what he wants to do wasn't supporting it at all um, at the time. So... <coughs> It took a while, and but once, you know, everybody had kind of, we finished all the bullshit that we had to finish up, and we had went after Claude, and we finally were like, you know what, let's handle this business, and then we'll do what we need to do from there. Um, where it was like, you know what, these people are fine. It, everybody here, even though everybody fucks around most of the time, um, we're still handling what we need to, and I feel like that's kind of when you got comfortable being doofy. <laughs> you know, once he sure. realizes that the responsibility is still there. I, I um, think there's a part of it, too, that, you know, it, it's very easy to forget is that Ravul is still, like, a young teenager. Yeah, um, absolutely. And when you're role-playing in character, it doesn't always come off. And the only time... Yeah. I, I love role-playing an NPC with Rav because he's kind of that snot-nosed teenager that knows too much. Mm-hmm. Um, like talking to an adult, and, and it's it's yeah, hysterical right. to see the push and pull of that, because sometimes mm-hmm. he's right and he absolutely knows it, and then you know NPC just does not like that, and other times Rab thinks he's you know right because he's a teenager, and then it, the other NPC is just like, no, you're wrong. W- what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, it, it's it's one of the coolest back and forth between player NPC because. It, he hasn't fully figured out who Ravul is yet because he's not an adult. So when he's talking yeah. to people, he's talking from this lens that Posey, Brondoon, and Cayman don't, or they've kind of gotten past and they've gotten over. Ravul's mm-hmm. also dealing with growing up as well as his own shitty past, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it, to say the least, like you said, he's, it's very deceiving, you know? And he even deceives himself very often with uh, the way he speaks his knowledge you know what i mean um just the 
his innate ability to be able to co- conversate that he doesn't like <clears throat> to use, might I add. Like, he does not like to be the voice of the group, but he understands that he may be the most literate of the group. Sure. Um, <laughs> well, literate is absolutely the right word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I mean, Posey and, and literate and formal is, but like, of the group, if you will. Yeah. Like, he understands very much how to word. be formal, and, and mm-hmm. so does Bron Dune, but like not to the point of like Bron Dune understands etiquette, but he doesn't understand like proper etiquette yep. and proper conversation. I think that really screws with Ravul a lot, is because he understands that he he you know I don't think this is too much of a spoiler backstory to say like from his childhood when he was younger, it's it was very instilled in him and using it to his will um yeah fucks with him a lot because he'll slip into it he won't slip into it he'll use it on purpose and it's very weird you know like yeah. you said he doesn't understand how his words work yet either or how he can conversate but understands how it works and and using that in relation to the rest of your group specifically like Brondune seeing Brondune and Ravul both tag team talking to someone is hysterical <laughs> because Brondune's just like whoa yeah Rav that's yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say and Rav's like yeah you take the hypotenuse of this you know whatever <laughs> and Brondune's like yeah that makes sense what he totally. said yeah, yeah. It, it, it's just hysterical it, yeah, yeah, I guess it's the yeah. more like scholarly attitude that he can yeah. break into, and it, it there's like the off put of Ravul where he's just quiet and content, and then he has this kind of upbeat scholarly attitude. When he's mm-hmm. upbeat and in a good mood, he can talk for days, you know. Yeah. But when he's quiet and doing his thing, he's in his head doing his thing. So, but it's also like your like you being almost like the the sound mind of the group yeah. at least for for posy it's kind of like again with the mom attitude trying to raise a bunch of kids but you have your one kid who's kind of more mature <laughs> and adult so you kind of rely on them to help basically raise these wild children just running around stealing things you know fighting into with panthers them. and running through the middle of town i don't know what you're talking about. yeah exactly hey, my character's at least six years old as far as i know <laughs> came is i'm pretty sure Cayman's and well, Cayman doesn't know how old he is actually, right? He's at least six yeah. years old. Yeah, he could. Yeah. He's literally five mentally, for all we know. Could be six. Could be two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Like we said, he could be. He could have been a toadstool in his past life, and that's the I end hope of he it. Was. Well, oh. anyways, that that whole thing we're moving into the Claude as the Claude story arc, right? When you had to go after Claude and everything like that. When you guys and your character started to really kind of become the Rav Four. You know, when you were forced to label it something, and I kind of was like, figure it out. Um, (laughs) Well, I think that it all kind of uh, amalgamated to one section when, uh, right after we'd got the necklace and we had left um, the Splitwood Forest. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't... This was during our bounty that we were doing before Claude, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was kind of a group point where we realized we were a group at that point once we got the necklace and we realized that again there is a greater story we found the lycanthropy when we got maria there are lycanthropy trolls we get to this you know dungeon for a lack of better terms an old temple destroyed and it's filled with shit that we've been seeing before it's filled with lycanthropy it's filled with weird fungi stuff and we find the necklace in the bag we find all the shit at that point we were kind of tied to each other you know it forcing us for a lack of better terms to stay as a group you know yeah like at that <laughs> point came and started seeing like oh okay well these are way too many quinces to not be destiny of some sort fate yeah guided to something so that's when he started realizing like okay i guess we're we're doing this <laughs> I mean, that's when we got like our bag of holding and really started being like a uh, party funds and started really like separating exactly. up stuff. And, like we found, you know, Nicholas the necklace and it was like, well, who needs it? Who can use it? Who's really going to benefit from it as opposed to, exactly. well, I found it. It's mine. You know, it, we kind of had that in character discussion of, well, you know, well, for I it gives you distance. It gives you dark vision. It gives you all these things that you need. So it's yours, you know, and that kind of really to Pradu solidified again that like, hey, we're all family here. We're kind of thinking for each other. We're all in this together. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, once you officially I'm, have uh, assign it as party funds, that's when you're officially yeah. uh, an adventuring party. <laughs> and I think when you guys, around that time frame too, and you know, please stop me if I'm speaking out of turn, Rich, but uh, around that time when you guys were dealing with, uh, you found Nicholas, the necklace, the tear saloon, um, you found the all this different fungi and mushroom stuff, that was around the time when came and started to get the the night terrors and stuff and and the visions uh that i still don't think he's really talk about but the first time that came and ever really kind of came out of his shell to talk about that was he got he was getting blasted uh with bron they were crushing it at a tavern i think after that <laughs> when they went back to the wardens after they got the necklace and then came and got blasted they crushed it a little bit and they started he just started rambling about, and that was the first bit where Cayman started to come out and mm -hmm. talk about himself willingly. Granted, he was drunk, but he started to do it. Which I, I mean, what mm -hmm. do you think about I mean, that, Rich? You, you How play did what that you go? know. No. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I think at that point it was also just kind of like came into and started trusting these people, and if nothing else, like Rav's still a mystery, Posey's dangerously optimistic but Bron Dune's pretty <laughs> down to earth yeah you guys are like drinking buddies just kind of shooting yeah. the shit and it just kind of yeah. came yeah, it's out like, I know what he's about he punches things <laughs> yeah. I'm actually just realizing event of now a discrepancy Bron Dune will fix with fit <laughs> I'm realizing now that like every one of us has some sort of specific connection that we have with K-Man mm -hmm. like for for Bron mm -hmm. Dune and K-Man it's the drinking together for Rav and K-Man, it's this weird, you know, necrotic experiment. Yeah. You don't know about that. We've been very, <laughs> <laughs> very true. We you know, very outside of character. It, but I, I love to, to your point there. I love the idea of like I make grass stuff and I need somebody to burn it if it goes wrong. So Rav, you're in. But for Posey, it was this weird moment of when you were talking with your mentor. And me and Brandoon were just randomly carving these elephants into various aspects of the house and hearing that, oh, you possibly had died originally and may have been brought back. And Posey was like, oh, I died once. <laughs> we're death buddies now. That was it huge, happens. too. I, I love mm -hmm. that. When that came up, and, and that was actually a piece in the story where not many, you guys didn't really interact with it that much. It, it yeah. was just mm -hmm. kind of brought up and you know it was kind of like a mic drop and no one heard it uh, and you know obviously you heard it you just talked about it but <laughs> like i don't know i thought that was super interesting and I, it makes me happy that you remember these kind of little subtle things that happen in the campaign like hearing dorhe say that it, it's like you know yeah they actually did hear that little tidbit of information that i dropped so you are hearing these bits of information about people's past that still don't make a lick of sense for anyone um, yeah, I definitely was fighting with the urge to just like pop Posey's head around the corner and be like, "Oh, you dead too? Me too? Oh my god!" I'm like, "No, they're having a moment. I can't. I can't intervene in this." Yeah, you, you did much better in that than I would have. I would have just been like, "Oh well, Mars Japan just happens to be." <laughs> my familiar oh, happens to be in the room because it's convenient at this time. Classic. Oh man, yeah, you guys Ugh. have heard a lot about K-Man's story, and it, you know yeah. it's gone a lot through it. Granted, it, it, you've learned the most about K-Man's story, but at the same time, K-Man has been the least upfront about his story because mm -hmm. and we one, also still know nothing. Like yeah, we we've heard know all of this, and we anything. don't know yeah. anything. If I'm being honest, I feel like we know the most about Posey, and mm -hmm. everybody else is on the same plane of not really knowing what's going on. Bron doing me. Yeah. Okay, man. Well, that's that's we're pretty. Brondon right hasn't now. had many yeah. hooks, right? He hasn't yeah. really been. His story isn't really there yet, in terms of where you guys are. Um, Cayman mm -hmm. just happens to be the center of what's been going on, at least currently. Posey came out because you guys were like, "What the hell, Posey? What's yeah. going on?" You know? Yeah. But, yeah, and I feel like that whole like that pose clawed fight, right? Where it's like this could be Posey's ex-husband. Like, we don't know. And like the whole idea, and that forced Posey to divulge everything, right? It was, we kind of knew where she was from. Like, yeah, her mom did this. Even Brondoon reacting to like, Posey was married before? What is like, yeah. Uh, and to him, that's like this weird thing. 
Loxodon stuff, right? But, um, you know, so hearing that, it was weird for him. And then F Posey kind of forced out, you know, we had to force the, the backstory out of Posey because it was, these could be people you know, especially before the Claude fight of everybody coming after you. It's and my literal life. Was well, yeah, that's the, that's the perfect. Yeah, we, I think we skipped yeah, over kind of jump is once we had started hunting for Claude and we had finished all of our business, uh, we had had, I believe we were at Edgefield um, mm -hmm. and we had been hanging out for yes. a while and the first assassination attempt had happened on Posey. Um, mm -hmm. I was the only one to notice it. The only thing going through my mind was there's an assassin <laughs> and I blew it up. What? Yeah. Well, you got stabbed, yeah. right? Oh, I Rav got stabbed missed a it bunch first. Of like, you didn't really notice that it. Was you got a... stabbed. And... She got rogue stabbed. That was in Alderaan, yeah. right? That was, was it in Alderaan? Was that Alderaan? I think that was in Alderaan yeah. because that's where Somewhere you were, that's where you were no. building the, the stuff, wasn't it? I believe so. Uh, Either way. Oh, was... yes, you're right. You're right. It was within yeah. Alderaan. Because, because you went to the Knoll encampment. And I made a giant explosion <laughs> saving Posey, and all the guards came out mm -hmm. and were like, you just nuked this building. We you need we need you to come in. And I'm like, listen, you're gonna be arrested. arrested. You're like, yeah. You gotta go. And I literally like I think I teleported out the window and they were mm -hmm. like, you can't do that. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> teenager. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That was that first like real teenage moment of like, don't tell me what to do. But yeah. we all had that. Even Brandu was like, You're not arresting me, like get away. Like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that was the first time we really realized that. Jamin was sitting on the wild sheep during that conversation. It's like, you I, were like up oh, there, and Posey's just like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did wild sheep into something really obnoxious. It was a bear. It was, it was bear. one it was whole bear. ass bear. Oh, yeah, I turned into a in bear because I was already low on hit points. So I was just like, bear. Yeah. All right, cool. I can't fit through the door. What now? <laughs> That, but I will say that moment when they tried to when they tried to assassinate Posey for whatever reason, um, mm -hmm. that was when your guys' whole conspiracy theories went everywhere. Like you guys, yeah. it's her ex husband. Maybe so it's her dad. Maybe it's her mom. Down. Who knows? And then oh. also the fact that in that moment when Posey was assassinated, right, Sentinel came in freaking clutch. Like he yeah. was trying to get out of there like three rounds in a row, and sent, he's Bron was just like. Bitch, stay Stop. there. <laughs> uh, and then afterwards, um, unfortunately, Ravul blew him up, so there wasn't much <laughs> left of him. But um, I do that. that could have been a whole nother thing where the, the assassin gets away, but mm -hmm. Sentinel yeah. has strikes me again. Like, I always forget <laughs> Brondune has Sentinel. Boom. Like, well, Brondune often forgets he has Sentinel too, so don't feel bad. <laughs> Yeah, I remember before that, we were actually planning to just leave the continent. It's like, look, mm -hmm. I don't know what Claude's about, but he seems a lot stronger than us, so... We hey, let's go check out Pacoma. Well, that was... <laughs> okay. Visit Rap's parents or something. We were, we were ready to leave, and yeah. then that was, like Brandon was saying, we kind of forced Kate to spell out her entire backstory, or forced Posey to spell out her, like, everything that had happened before there, um, to try to figure out any sort of tie to what we were doing. Um, or, and we kind of assumed that they were tied with Claude um, at that time. And I believe we kind of got our answer with that. Um, well, I would be curious to know what was going through Posey's mind. Yeah. Seeing these letters come through and knowing that they were after her specifically, especially once we realized that they were writing in Orcish and all this other mm -hmm. stuff and during that whole time. I and genuinely then, did not have a sword. I had no, I did not have a single idea or even a small inkling of what this was going to be until Brondoon got that vision. Mm -hmm. Because as far as she knew, and as far as I as a player knew, her ex-husband was long dead and gone, buried somewhere. And then seeing the elven descent, um, specific, possibly, we still don't know if he was specifically talking about me, but all of these ties to me specifically, like there's literally only really one thread that could possibly tie me to literally anything that's yeah. happening right now so oh boy <laughs> that, was, that was a fun reveal so, though like a fun like conspiracy theory to, does, to follow does Posey think that it's Horik? Um, I think she very much does at this point like she was like you know that's ridiculous that's dumb he's dead somewhere like it's it's not a big deal but like the more that she started to think about it and the more aggressive it started becoming specifically aimed at her, she doesn't actually know what happened to Horik. 
She yeah. said he was dead on the ground. She went to her mom and her aunt. It was like, I did this thing. And they were like, okay, here's some money. Here's your stuff. Go and we'll take care of it. So she has no idea what actually so happened. How do you feel about your family right now? Are you kind of torn about what happened after you left? Because you have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I've had no contact with them in six months in game, I think. Um, six or eight months, something like that. Um, and the possibility of him coming back and this kind of this kind of idea that he might be like this powerful mage or he's working with a powerful mage or something like that. She's extremely worried because it doesn't make sense for them to want Posey and not want some of her fam any of her family members who are way more powerful than she is and specifically about things like healing. So there's she's very confused as to why they would want her and the only thing that she can think of is basically being like a bargaining chip to be like, hey, we have your daughter, now you gotta do whatever. Hmm. So nothing good is coming out of this and she no. really no, wants to go much. home. So I, I guess on the topic of family, I, I wanna, you know, Brondune and Posey specifically, um, both of you have either received letters or attempted to send letters at negligible post offices. Ding um, dang post offices. <laughs> so, uh, um, following up on the family kind of ties, um, what do you kind of, I guess, Brondune, what do you expect from like Revo or not Revo, um, Keanu? Like, what are you, Keanu. what are you hoping you get from him? Or like, what do you think is going to happen with him with that tie? Well, I mean, so the, the idea there is he got the letter and it was more like, you know, politic, po political than he expected. You know, um, armies are moving, the king seeming weird. So it, it kind of led him into the thing. And that was all kind of even before we knew that war was breaking out. So in his mind, it's kind of like, all right, maybe they were preparing for the war. They're sending troops, whatever they're doing to, to assist. Um, but him knowing Keanu and wondering why he's kind of like involved in these things when he doesn't necessarily, you know, maybe get involved in politics. He doesn't necessarily fight in the army, even though he's a well-trained fighter. Is it something that he would need to do if he enlists? Is it something that he's going to need? Is it something that Brondude would then have to go and help him or go and help the army because he can fight much like Keanu does? You know, really, where does all of that fall? Is it going to be a pride thing of we're fighting for Pukoma to protect this place and I need you to come fight with me? You know, so he doesn't necessarily know that and he's hoping to get some answers. Um, but he has written back to his dad's, you know, kind of hoping for some of the same answers, but more of, I think he wrote to them of more of a business interest because the whole idea was that they wanted him to take over the business. He didn't really want to, so he ended up leaving. Um, but now he's maybe getting back into the idea that he could and he's trying to make some business deals or be a businessman, but in his own terms, you know, in the other islands and trying to make different connections. And that's really what he's looking for there. Um, but for Posey, I think it was a little different. What were your thoughts on your letters that she wrote to your mom? I think it was more for information. Because Posey hasn't but... received one yet. She's only been, right. she's only sent one out and is currently waiting for them back at Mooncliff, potentially. Who knows? Although um, we're on a yeah. different place now. Well, so. it's, it's also difficult because she had only sent the letters not that long ago. Mm -hmm. So she knows it's going to take forever and... If we do end up going home, we're probably going to end up either at this. We're probably going to end up there the same time my letters arrive, or before. Um, but at this point, the thought has crossed her mind that she's almost afraid to get a letter back, and that it's not going to be from them, and it's going to be from someone else, whether it's Horik or someone else that's like, "We've got your family." Um, or the opposite end of that is going home and seeing all the letters uh, unopened at the front door or something like that. Um, so she's very anxious to hear a reply, but is a little terrified to receive anything back at this point. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, as far as family is concerned, I think you two are the only ones that have uh, any sort of family ties that have come up in the story as of yet. Um, mm -hmm. So with Cayman not knowing much and Ravul kind of being <laughs> Ravul and not saying much. Um, yeah, well, Cayman had Drohe that came around pretty early on too. You know, I guess if you want to call that family or a fatherly figure. Actually, that's a good point with Drohe. Because right. um, a lot of 
came in story, you know, early on was the mushroom. You know, you call you call him a mushroom. He's a fun guy, you know. Um, and your interaction with Dorohe have been kind of like probing him for information, like every single time you see him. Well, and you you seem to get some information, but like at the same time, you're never happy with it. Like, wh what is Cayman thinking about Dorohe right now? Well, Cayman's thinking like that dream was weird the first time. When he had it the second time, it's like, okay, well there are several figures I don't know, but Dorohe's there too, so he must also know them or have some information on them. But he hasn't told me in the three to five years I've known him what's that about and then he's still dodgy when i ask him about it so it's like all right well there's one lead to my past and he doesn't want to tell me i'm not sure if that's because i shouldn't know or maybe he knows something i don't know well that's a good question does k-man want to know his past is he worried about it especially at this point with all the stuff yeah. that we've uncovered is it more uh, of just like if it comes up it comes up he's just he's just kind of worried about what's going on right now i think k-man's Cayman's also one level cleric, but trained as trained to, to be a sort of a cleric of war for the uh, not cults. Damn it, we keep talking about cults. Uh, <laughs> the religion based around Marthamer Doom and like helping travelers and helping wanderers, keeping paths safe. And we're kind of doing that. And at this point, he's kind of seeing like, okay, well, the more I travel with these guys, the more I'm running into things that seem to be related. <clears throat> So maybe I'll find answers if I keep wandering with these guys. This seems like some sort of fate or destiny. That's a good he point. He does want to know, but I mean, it's short of waterboarding through Ohe, I don't on. know if that'll go well. Yeah, that's cool. That, yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Like, he also doesn't really want to not trust Ohe because, like, well, if I can't trust him, then the few things that he does know about his past are all come into question. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. the only solid point in his history could be based on a lie, and it's like, all right, well, that'd be a lot, be a lot to deal with. So let's go kill some gnolls or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's more like you're wandering, and if your history comes up, it comes up, and you're not super, you know, you, you're kind of, I guess, hesitant because of Dorohe's lack of upfrontness, I suppose. And I, I like, don't know how he that's might have a good, good reason for it. Yeah. And also, whatever happened to Cayman before, it might have been Cayman did it to himself. Might have been a willing participant. Just don't really know what happened. Well, I may have been a lich. It, <laughs> he may have been a, a lot lich. to explore there, and we'll find out <laughs> hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, yeah. I guess with that, uh, we're, we'll move on from the Claude to the, the end of this. Um, where we're currently leaving off when you get the jobs to, or the ask to not be the hero, but at the same time be the hero that no one knows. Um, yes, we have accepted the role of Batman. <laughs> yes, essentially. <laughs> yeah. But um, it, 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 it's, there's one thing I want to touch on before as well. Um, sure. During the Claude battle, um, how things had kind of climaxed. Uh, directly saying you know we don't have to talk and us kind of being like or we can talk um and i think the four of us kind of coming to the conclusion of you know the time for talking was long ago you know you shouldn't have sent assassins you shouldn't have tried to kill us repeatedly we could have talked he um, sent all a whole bunch of messages he had plenty yeah. of time to talk yeah he had plenty of time to talk instead of just constantly sending threats and assassins and werewolves at us um Posey had almost gone down, I believe, because he yep. had gone directly at you. Brondun and I had jumped in and tried to body block and try to fight. K-Man was off doing what he always does, fighting off ads, <laughs> like four of them in the corner by himself. Um, at any time, guys! You really don't get AoE! <laughs> I think, and that all wrapped up, uh, we ended up, Claude ended up going into his weird lycanthropy form, the black goo oozed form. Um, we still don't really know what that was. Um, but we had found the papers inside, as well as seen the, uh, backflashes of what had happened there before. Um, so I, I, I'm actually curious, before we jump over this, I want to cover two things. The flashback with Brondune, and, of course, the crystal. Um, <laughs> so, when the flashback happened, and Brondune was, I think, by himself, just walking around the place, yeah. what, what was mm -hmm. going through your head? What was going on, um... 
and what did you think afterwards? Well, one, Brandon, especially afterwards, we'll start there. Uh, it was scared that he saw something that he would not be able to communicate back or have mm-hmm. others see. Like, there's something important here that I need to let everyone know, but I don't know if I can tell everyone at the same time. It was so know, perfect and, that it was Bron Dune who saw yeah. the very important flashback. And that, then that's his thing. He's like, well, I don't necessarily, you know, want this information because I don't know if I can communicate it correctly. Mm-hmm. You know, and then being able to have people check the memories and stuff, that, that helped that out. Um, and he still believes it was probably tied to having the necklace or saloon of some sort, um, you know, and... and and that's starting to weigh on him a little bit too of, you know, is this necklace more powerful than what he should be having? You know, especially at that point of like, hey, is this giving me something like, yeah, it gives me cool stuff, but like, is it also something else that I need? Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, Bron Dune's the kind of just go for it guy anyway. That's why he was out exploring alone in the castle and just kind of poking things as Bron Dunes are wont to do. Um, but I, I think the big thing there was is he saw it, didn't fully register what it was, and so he felt like he just needed to tell everybody about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was really it, and um, you know, was glad that other people could see the vision. And I think he pulled it out of his head. And yeah, it's kinda I like, think I that's weird, but like, <laughs> it's like it's weird, but I'm glad you could do that so somebody else can officially see what I saw, so we can communicate yeah. that. Um, but then you found the crystal down there, which. You know. I, I have no idea what that thing is alone. <laughs> um, in, well, while we're on that still, real quick, Posey, you had mentioned that the flashback had kind of screwed with you a bit, too, once we had shown it back. Oh, buddy. Um, what were your thoughts about that possibly being your husband again? Like, what, what, were, what was going through your mind there of that being possibly your husband or the man that has possibly been sending assassins after you? Uh... For both Posey and myself, uh, absolutely horrified because I, as far as Posey is aware and as far as I'm aware, uh, none of her family members would ever try to, I guess that's not 100% true because they did it to Posey specifically, but they have, her whole family has kind of a like, very deeply hate relationship when it comes to significant others. Um, so she doesn't think that any of her family members would have brought him back, which would have meant that someone extremely powerful, as powerful as them, did instead. So it, she's more concerned with who's actually behind this, because she doesn't think that it's her ex-husband. She doesn't think it's Horik. Um, Something higher than him. Yes, someone extremely powerful and what that's going to mean. Um, someone that has the ability to control all these creatures and send, like, has enough power to send all these things after us. Uh, mm-hmm. Things that are very skilled and very powerful. Um, so I think that's that's the thing that concerns her the most was the thought process of, oh, that might be my ex-husband. He's supposed to be dead. What brought him back? And that's what the real threat is. She's not really In terms of, of ex-husband. times now, uh, we haven't seen really any sign of you being on the hunt anymore or being I hunted know. anymore. Um, how's Posey feeling like current on the ship about that? Is that she's, something going through her mind? She's very excited, actually. She's feeling a little bit less stressed out, surprisingly, even though our road ahead of us is to literally stop a war. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the fact that she, like, we all almost died to these, these demons and ghosts and everything. But it's heading towards more familiar more familiar territory for her mm, and even literally. if yeah literally so even if something is chasing her it's kind of like going back home where you find you kind of slip into that role of okay I'm the child going back home whether or not mm. I was a full adult and handling myself perfectly fine out in the real world as soon as you get back home you're like okay I'm that the child sort of here comfort. Yeah, and everyone yeah. else is kind of in charge, so I can rely on them to help me. So yeah. she's feeling a lot better going here, especially headed towards uh, Cape Breath. That's good. That's a lot to take in as well for one character. <laughs> the, like, I, I need to go back and watch it because I, I know that my 
like you saw the process happening on my face. Mm -hmm. I like, love wait, watching wait. Kate's faces. <laughs> it like they're the best. Whenever that whole time describing that um, vision or that whatever Brondune experienced, watching Kate's, I didn't really get to watch it because I was focusing on reading it. But going back and rewatching it and seeing everyone's face, like you see David just sitting there, like you know David does, just <laughs> you know, and then you see Posey like. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much fun to watch your different experience your faces and how they go up and down and i can't wait for you specifically to see what this turns into because I can't holy wait. snot just remember remember this moment right now and how excited i am because it is going to be fucking hysterical <laughs> honestly even if it has literally nothing to do with posy and we've been chasing the entirely wrong lead i am so excited and curious mm -hmm. to find out what this is yeah. because i love a good mystery and there's there's nothing that points us in a very specific direction to tell us what this is yo love it that's that's what's been bothering me the most is that we've had literally no clue at all i mean it's just, we're just kind of guessing that it's horrid yeah. And we're tying these things together very, very loosely, you know, so it's still very much up in the air. Well, I, I do want to try and wrap this up relatively soon because I know Rich has to work earlier in the morning. Um, so let, let's move on to the final bit. Uh, we'll we'll right. talk about the gem. Uh, but That could um, be a, a, a different thing by itself. But let's so move on to the very ending of the last couple of sessions where you guys get essentially conscripted to go to Kabora to figure out what's going on and then you get attacked by ghost pirates and you pretty much have to sit on an island for a couple of days when some crazy shit goes on um so stubborn we could have just so left. <laughs> i was really annoyed at the fact that we were being propositioned a uh to to do that to to sail across the sea and help with a war um, in character, at least, Ruvel was very annoyed. He was like, I, I got other things I have to do. Like, I, I just got to the point, like I had mentioned earlier, I just got to the point where I felt comfortable with this group being able to do what I need to do still. And my exact worry of signing with the Wardens originally, of being constricted to do shit that we don't want to and having to fly under a banner that's not ours, happened immediately. So I, I was very annoyed um, in character, but reading through my notes, going back through everything, kind of realizing that this could be helpful for what I need to do. Um, so I, I'm actually pretty happy and confident with this right now, at least with what's yeah. going on. I'm very huh? pissed with the ghost ship. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's funny that Rav's the only one that's really got like, well, outside of Posey, I guess really that has like feels like there's a reason to go over there because like Brondoon like doesn't really have a reason to go over there except he doesn't really yeah. have a reason to do much of anything else so what's the point um you know and it, it kind of just comes down to that feeling of like well what else am I gonna do these guys are going I'll go too um I mean Posey's got family there Rav's got a plan there and I felt like Cayman was kind of in that same boat as Rav of like well, what else would I do uh, maybe there's something over there I don't know let's go but, yeah, Kevin, it, how did you feel about those kinds of things? Well, it was a lot of money. <laughs> but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was. man. But, um, also, like I said earlier, Kevin doesn't really have, like, a, oh, go here to find answers, so I'm kind of hoping that it's just kind of fate guiding him along, and he'll find answers as he needs to as he goes. And also, Sweet just, like, flow. I've taps the major resource on this side of the con on this side of the country the sanctum or that's what it was right the big library was the, the sanctum, sanctum yep. mm -hmm. and they didn't have any useful information really or anything that would really explain what happened to came in so Trust now he's going to try and go over there and see what information's on that side maybe there'll be something there yeah is and also, Posey's being hunted, so uh, jumping continent seems like a good way to put space between <laughs> you and assassins. <laughs> well, not to mention, we don't know if it's necessarily Posey or all of us are being hunted at this point, because all, all of our faces have been seen. Yeah, it's, it's very um, awkward. 
So, yeah. <laughs> so far, only Posey's got posied. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Although it could just be that they're extremely smart and know that I'm like the core healer that can revivify someone back to Maybe. life. And so they're just like, get rid of her first. I don't know. <laughs> How about Posey? What's she going through? Um, Signing up for a war. So that was... Like, at, at first it was like, what? <laughs> like, we're four Nimrods that barely got out of one fight with one dude alive. <laughs> like, why do you want us to ha handle this extremely delicate matter? Uh, but after thinking on it for, like, literally a second, I was like, no, stopping a war is literally the most good that you could possibly do for anyone. So she was pretty much 100% on board after she gave it a little bit of thought. It was just the fact that it happened so quickly. She was like, we just, like, breathe for half a second. But um, also with the, the assassins and everything, the idea of getting off the continent as soon as possible was uh, a really good choice. Plus, we were already, like, had been discussing going off continent yeah. to go travel and find what these like this map Beacon. was pointing to with all the different stars and the towers and things so uh, she was already kind of mentally prepared she just wasn't prepared for it to happen so fast yeah because there's yeah. a lot of different things that have happened and that have kind of they're like little leads at different pieces of the world that you know pull you away from where you were you know your comfort zone is moon cliff that's kind of like yeah. your hub with everything and you've slowly, you know, as throughout the course of the campaign, you've heard about Pukoma, you've heard about things that happen in Kabor, you've seen a map of certain things popping up, and you have different reasons to go explore, but you haven't really... And that's, honestly, you were going to go explore before you were. Claude, yeah. mm -hmm. yep. but then you were like, you know what, they tried to kill me, uh, you know, one too many we times, to we got to end this or we're going to get ended. Um so this could have happened way earlier, but it just yeah. kind of worked out this way. So. Yeah. It, it, I think it, 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 for at least I feel Rabul Posey maybe came in. I don't know how much Brondoon is feeling, but like you said, he's kind of just going with the flow. But I feel everybody's kind of comfortable with the choice. It took a bit to understand the consequences and really talk with everybody and talk amongst the party and you know, understand what we, we're getting ourselves into doing this. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was a really good conversation, too, just to be able to, like, okay, let's just sit down and talk this out and figure it out, figure where all of our heads are at. And Exactly. I think, yeah, I think we all are, even just understanding where everyone's head is at with the thoughts of it, whether or not they think it's a good idea or not, uh, I think we definitely all feel a little bit more comfortable in at least going together, knowing everyone's kind of general mindset for what we're getting into. And yeah. also being able to negotiate and out and basically saying that if we can't do anything, you're not going to hunt us and kill us. Yeah. Yeah, we've reserved right to bail. Yeah, yeah exactly. Wait, it, it, that is a very comforting piece as well, <laughs> knowing that. But I, I honestly, <laughs> Ruvul was going to make his way to k eventually, you know? So like this is, like like you said, eventually Posey was needed to go back. K-Man needed to go there to find his shit. So it's just kind of the way of the way it went, and they, it's pretty okay with it. So well, you'll get there potentially buddy. next session. So we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find if out. We don't, don't get attacked again. Um, but yeah, I mean that was Broad dude was excited to shoot cannons. That was his, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, I mean the island thing was it seems to be like a one off for him. Um, I mean there's a lot of cool stuff there, but it wasn't like a, anything like related to us. So. Cool yeah, experience. I don't think Ravul is worried about the island at all, specifically. Yeah. Um, or the ghost ship. Right now, he, all he's worried about is being out in the middle of the... What is it? The Astral Expanse? Astral Expanse, Astral or something? Expanse yeah. He's just worried about that because of all the fucked up shit that happens out there. You know, sure. he he wants to go to Kabor, he understands the best means, but he does not want to be on the boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, especially everything that's happened. But he's we're already he's, almost out of potions. What what about yeah. K Man? What about how about how do you feel about that island, K Man? <laughs> um I mean there was a forge there, could kinda use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, have to go back. Yeah, so it was actually funny because the session before you went there, the captain was like, Well, we could risk trying to get to get to the other continent, we might sink. 
or we could stop here on the this mysterious island for repairs. And ki and I think I literally said, "All right, sure, let's stop on the haunted island in the middle." <laughs> yeah. And then we go there. It's like you see ghosts. It's like uh all of it. <laughs> that was the so moment, good. And it, it, it was more of a spur of the moment thing when Rule's looking for monkeys. Like he 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 likes monkeys. He just wanted to find a monkey. Like that was so good. But Holy shit, that monkey bit. <laughs> the, the whole fact that that monkey bit led to discovering that there's no life on this island was very uh, interesting. <laughs> very fun yep. for mm -hmm. um, you know, Yeah, that was a real divine oh. sense there. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, everything. <laughs> there was a moment of, holy shit. Yep. You know, and oh. then you realize, oh, it's the monkey. Oh, there's a lot of, okay. Woo, we're not going to die right now, at least yet. Uh, and then we did. And No, you didn't die. Almost. No, you were fine. It was all... I still had, like, a heal left. Completely <laughs> calculated. I had no spells left. <laughs> I was at zero <laughs> cantrips, baby. I don't know, Kamea had a lot of action in that fight, so I feel like he was the star. Kamea took out, like, four people by himself. <laughs> No, nah, like, oh. I, I took down one when you guys <laughs> killed the other dude. The rest just decided to leave. <laughs> it was so funny because I was like, my next turn, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you get rid of all the... Oh, they're gone. Okay, so the main person. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, Posey's you, you just reading the letter. For a while. You guys were like back to back, like punching the shit out of each other, like tag team in these groups. And then you, you were just like, all right, I'm gone. And you just <laughs> left him to it. You, you were even like, I'm going to take like four hits of opportunity yeah, it, here, but I'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, when you're back to back with someone, don't give him sanctuary. That's what I learned. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. And then Brondon and I are on the other side of the room giving yep. him boogie beat down, two man style. Like I, I that whole fight in general I think went really well. Um I we think did it. Oh my god, it did. We killed an old man and old woman that are home. We did it. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> they were that, fancy. That that build up to that fight was hysterical too. Like cause, cause you guys just happened to find this letter with a lucky natural twenty, you know? Yep. Um so you find this letter, and that could have gone one of two ways. And Posey decided to just talk about, you know, give him the letter, and then read it out loud during the fight. And she went straight after Posey because, you know, for one reason or another, she didn't like what Posey was doing. And Ship of a mother. <laughs> yeah, and then Posey just freaking gets the final blow there, like with literally a one Dad. hit point. With a dagger. With a dagger. After nope. going down. She gets knocked down, comes back up with her orcish whatever the hell oh, it's yeah. called, throws a dagger. Never, she's never used the freaking dagger in the entire campaign, Correct. and the Correct. first time she does it, she takes out this ghost Lich thing. Queen. Yeah, right. It, it, it's just you can't write this stuff. It, it just happens. <laughs> I think that puts Posey of... up to four or three kill steals. It's like I mean, four or five. I'm pretty sure Posey has killed every single big bad boss mm -hmm. of each arc if you every, will every every claude... boss we fought she has gotten the final kill oh my god she did get claude didn't she but see here's <laughs> the other half of it is the fight like before we went down the dark tunnel and she was just in a well the whole time <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's only two sides to posey i kill yep. everything or i literally am well doing, i'm, I'm just gonna ground. go ahead and try to <laughs> dig this well out no one's telling me what's going on up there i'm just gonna keep digging I, I was literally told by, everything's fine so here we go <laughs> and i got kidnapped <laughs> whole isle of talados was uh hate that Unique place. in general. I, I fucking hate that I place. loved that place. That was amazing. <laughs> of course you do. It was I mean, great. we're gonna go back, right? Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh come no, on. I also remember going in there, I'd like reviewed some spells and learned the things I thought would take 10 minutes, take an hour to two hours to oh, cast. Oops. And it was like, oh, oh no. Um, hey, do we want to come back tomorrow? The lady will see you now. Oh, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Shit. But so, you did actually, get. I got a question for you, Lee. Yeah. What would have happened if we if we left? What what would have the butler done or her husband? Like, do, what do you think? Uh, or how how do you think he would have acted? If you had left instead of seeing the lady? Yeah. 
I mean, it really depends. Um, at, th at that point in time, you were just kind of intruding on their, you know, their house, essentially. Yeah. Um, so realistically, had you left, they probably wouldn't have let you left because you've taken a lot of stuff. Fair. They did take all um, of their things. You know, had you left before then, like before Don't he said... Have needs for supplies. Well, be before he said, why don't you come talk to this lady, um, they might have just let you go and you wouldn't have known any wiser. You know what I mean? You kind of stumbled upon that because of your sick curiosity about what's going on. Um, yeah. Granted, there was a lot of curious things happening, which I, I probably would investigate myself if I were a player. Um, yeah, I think that was our player mode came out of, like, yeah. we need to know what's happening here. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I think we all kind of accepted that. And mm -hmm. I, I de this was definitely put in front of us to interpret or to have fun with our player mode and explore. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. Th there's no doubt in my mind that Lee put this yeah. island here for yeah. us to run around and have fun for a, couple, for a session mm -hmm. or two. You know what I mean? You yeah, know what? And... It might have been a one off. There might be information <laughs> in it. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Do I mean, you did get a lot of books and a lot of technical information that you didn't haven't fully gone through yet yeah um but who knows what'll come of that so yeah rules ready to get the fuck off this boat though well, now that we yeah, left the island ground. and i mean he he didn't he wanted to figure out what was on the island but he didn't care nearly as much to stay you know what i mean like he, he just kind of wanted to leave Especially once the ghosts were there, and there were ghost monkeys. Um, but I guess, you know, the fact that we didn't have to leave, and the fact that we were kind of stuck there. Really but what helped. was that magic item that you sent oh, to? Like, what was that? <laughs> Look, stop it. That's going to haunt me forever. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> what was it? It's a rock that makes magic go away. It's a rock. <laughs> yeah, that's it extremely been. useful. It might have been a rock. It might have no, been no, a magic carpet. It might have been a ring of was. craziness. Uh, like, we don't know. Like, what if who it was knows? a magic carpet? Bron dude would kill somebody for a magic carpet. <laughs> Could you imagine Bron dude on a magic carpet? <laughs> it's surfing. Just Diddy like Kong <laughs> Racing. Diddy Kong Race. Anyone yep, played yep. that? Hello there. Yep. Like, <laughs> it's going to need to be a very big car for Bron. <laughs> Very big carpet for Bron Dune, like. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. Large ornamental dining room. Carpet. Just fly, <laughs> flying the uh, first floor level cutout of the carpet. Just mm -hmm. all the rooms. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like a house. It's like a cutout of a house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! Man. That was a great place to end. But the next session, you're on your way to Kabora, and you may or may not Indeed. get there, depending upon how it goes. So. Um, yeah, you're gonna it's going to be a shame taste. when that crack can kill us all. <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be a shame, all right. Um, <laughs> we'll see what happens when you get there, because uh, you guys are essentially left on your own at that point. Yep. You've been said, so. they pretty much said, figure it out and do your own thing. Um, yeah, we, we have things. I took notes of things to do when we get there. Yeah? Yeah. One of us ish. <laughs> Those are the only notes you've taken all campaign, huh, Rich? Oh no, there's a lot of broken <laughs> sentences. Um, <laughs> Silas is making a delivery. Is some yep, sort of yep, key that's for the term. barrel. That's for the barrel. Oh yeah, we need to figure out what's up with that barrel. We oh. never even looked at it. That's true. It's, it's uh, Brook, filled with like, drugs boot, or something. Goblin Trimpy. <laughs> what? Go what? There's a goblin named Trimpley at the Valenbrook oh. Muddled Boot. Oh, oh yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, you at least have somewhere to go, you know, to figure some stuff out. So, but that's for next session. Um, I think we've yeah. mumbled on enough about what's been going yeah. on in the session. So we're going to uh, call it here, everybody. Um, I know we kind of rambled about the sessions up until this point. We were covering 26 episode so cut us some slack i apologize um but it's anyways um it's always my fault but hey could have been a magic carpet who knows uh anyways uh thank you it's guys. definitely a magic carpet thank you guys you for hanging back. out um <laughs> for going back. Uh, again <laughs> we'll be live every friday uh at twitch.tv slash behold this crit uh at 7 p.m est so hopefully we'll see you there if not we'll tv see... nope. slash four, four nerds, nerds, by nerds. By nerds. that's the youtube what did I do? 
You said twitch.tv slash behold his credits. Twitch.tv slash four nerds by nerds. Yeah, I know. F Look, man, I've been running the YouTube channel as best I can. All right. I, I'm doing my best. All right. Cut me some slack. I'm, I'm done. Sirenscape's cool. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>